Hello friends, Mandar here. I'm back with another video. Today let's talk about some important topics for people who are in the adjustment of status, particularly related to processing time if your date is current. Secondly, we'll talk about the inter file. What, did, what does it mean to replace I-140 with a new one in certain scenarios? And we'll also talk about some of the questions from my previous video that had to do with house buying experience. There's going to be a lot of interesting things that I'm going to cover in this video. So watch this video until the end and let's get started. I have got to do this disclaimer in each and every video, so please bear with me. I'm not an immigration lawyer, so anything that I say in this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs before you take any action, please consult a competent immigration lawyer. One of the most common questions that I get is my priority date is current, when can I expect a green card? Now see, here's the situation. You, ha you have gone through the process of PERM 140 and now you have waited or you haven't had any wait and your priority date is current. The USCIS has a process to process your 485. Now lately because of the number of filings and number of visa, visa numbers available in the employment based category, they have been speeding up the applications. What I mean by that is they have been doing some things that they had no never done in the past such as they have been waiving some biometric appointments. If you have given your biometrics in your uh, any of your previous applications, they have been sending a letter that we don't need your biometrics as we already have them on file and they can reuse them for the purpose of adjustment of status. So basically biometrics is used for your background check, your FBI file check and things like that. It saves you time to go for another appointment uh, at a local office where they take your fingerprints. So that is a good chunk of time that is saved. Now they are also doing the final interview waivers. There never used to be an interview for employment based category up until 2017. They introduced it but now they are taking it away. There is no official policy as such but it's been very common to see interviews being waived as, uh, right now. I have seen people getting their green cards in very very less time within two to three months. But lately I have seen more applicants that have been taking much longer. So there is lesser percentage of applicants that are getting the visas within two to three months if their date is current. The, but there are more number of applicants that are getting that are having to wait for as much as eight to ten months. As long as your application is clear, it has no issues and you have responded to all the RFEs such as medical and such and your file is complete, there should not be any issue. The processing time is merely due to the fact that they have huge number of backlog of flood of applications for 485 and that's the only reason that they are falling behind on your application. Some people are lucky and they have been reporting that they got within two months or three months. Most of the other people are not so lucky. But if your date is current in the final action date chart, uh, rest assured that if your file is complete, you will get a, you will get a green card soon. Now there is another question, what about if the visa numbers are wasted from this, uh, this fiscal year? So the, uh, remember there are uh, almost around 260,000 visas available in this fiscal year 2021, uh, which, uh, which USCIS is processing. Now uh, Charlie, although he has progressed dates in the final filing dates chart, so which means if you go by my analogy of airport, in my from my previous video if you haven't checked that video please do check that will give you a clear understanding of what is the difference between filing date chart and uh, final action date chart charlie does allow a lot of people to come into the airport in the sense that he allows them to apply for 485 now it has various different advantages that you get your ead sooner you get your advanced payroll so you are able to work for any employer and also you are able to travel outside of the united states as long as your uh, advanced payroll is valid to come back so that those are really good um, benefits of entering into the pool of uh, i-485 even if your final action date is not current so that is when uh, as per the analogy you are allowed inside the airport waiting area and you have all the facilities and you can wait as uh, until your flight arrives and until you get a boarding pass which is analogous to getting your final action date current now uh, let's come back to if what if the visa numbers are waste what it means is what if the uscis is not able to use all the 100 and 
260,000 visas that are available for fis this fiscal year. From a, from an applicant perspective, it shouldn't matter to you. The reason I'm saying that is as long as your date is current and as long as your the application is complete, you'll still be assigned a visa number. It should not matter to you whether the visa number is from this fiscal year or next fiscal year. So depending on when your file is processed, whether it's before uh, September 30th, if it's up before September 30th, it will be current year visa number allocated. If it is after that, it will be next year's visa number allocated. All it means is you will still get a visa number, uh, but uh, from the from the perspective of the visa number wastage, it means that they were not able to completely utilize the number of visa visas available during that particular year because they had so big of a processing volume. That's all it means. But as I mentioned earlier, with the waiving of the biometrics and waiving of the final interview, I think they are processing these applications very fast and throughout the summer, they are probably going to reach a very high number of applicants processed. Now, whether or not they utilize the total number of uh, visas available is to be seen. I highly doubt it, but let's see what happens. But uh, rest assured, if your date is current, it does. It shouldn't matter to you whether it's from this year or next year, as long as it gets assigned to you. Now, there are certain other things that coming uh, that are coming up in the Eagle Act. I made a video on Eagle Act uh, just few days back. You might want to check that out. It has certain provisions that could benefit faster processing. But even if that gets implemented, it's not going to be effective until October of 2022. Now another topic that I wanted to kind of cover in a summarized fashion in this video is about interfiling. I will be making a separate video on interfile, how you can replace 140 with another one in a separate video. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so that you get notification on that video as well. So what is interfile? Say for instance, you had your I-140 approved by a company A. Now you had that for a while, you entered into I-485 stage and uh, because your priority date was current as per the chart allowed by USCIS and 180 days have passed. Now, say for instance, uh, you change the company and your previous company no longer exist or they, uh, they went bankrupt or they, get bought out, they got bought out by somebody else and they try to revoke your I-140. Now in this situation, it's a little tricky. Uh, USCIS doesn't have a valid I-140 for you to process your 485. So in that case, if you join a company B, you can have another I-145 filed through company B and have it attached to the same application of I-485 so that your processing remains intact. But this interfiling is possible in case your previous I-140, approved I-140 is no longer valid or I was revoked or if you want to replace it with your new I-140 to keep your I-485 or adjustment of status uh, process intact. So that is in summary what is interfile and what does that mean? I'm going to make a separate video on detailed scenarios for interfile where you can use this and where you cannot use it. Keep an eye out for the reminder. Now so far if you haven't hit the like button, I highly encourage you to do so because that helps in the YouTube algorithm to spread this video. It will be greatly appreciated. Now let's talk about some of the questions that are related to the house buying video that I recently made and you can check that video somewhere here. Now one of the questions that I get asked is uh, say for instance you are on visa and you have uh, uh, you are working on a project or for a company you bought you took the risk you you thought that it was too long of a wait to wait for a green card and you went ahead and bought a house and if sir if within a year your company closes or whatever happens you get laid off what happens next so if you are on an h1 visa and if you get laid off you still have 60 days of grace period to apply for another h1 transfer with another company now 60 days of grace period should be enough for you to get your next job but say for instance you don't find any job that will allow you to continue in the united states there are options now options are going on another kind of visa having your h1 done 
through another now remember you got your original h1 you had to go through the lottery system now you can have some other company sponsor your h1b without any lottery so even if you don't have a transfer you could file a fresh h1 with another company who would be willing to hire you that could be another scenario so uh, another scenario would be you could quickly go on a student visa Uh, if you, if you are willing to study you could go on a student visa this might not be an option for everybody but it might be option for some now third scenario is if your spouse is working and she has or he or she has her own h1b you could always go on their dependent so dependent visa can be applied any time so you can go from your h1 to h4 next if you have already have your ead or you are in adjustment of status Uh, you don't need to worry about the status because even if you lose your job on h1b your h1b gets discontinued but you are still in adjustment of status that is a valid status that is the status given until your uh, i485 is adjudicated now the last fifth option nothing works out and you have to leave united states now you have looked at all of these options you have got some time put your home on the rent I would suggest apply for Canadian immigration. You should always have Canadian PR on the backup. If you decide to go to Canada that is also a fantastic option. I have made several videos on moving to Canada and uh, options for Canada. So if you have a house in United States you lose a job you can continue to keep your home on rental and move to Canada and work from there. And after a few years if you decide to come back that's an option as well. or you continue to gather rent as long as you want and you can sell the house later on so that shouldn't deter you from buying your home while on visa now there are several other scenarios that i would also cover in my future videos but these are most common scenarios that i i wanted to go through from the american dream series perspective i'm also going to make some more videos on insurance on cryptos so stay tuned to my channel if you haven't already subscribed subscribe to my channel so that you'll get those notifications and if you found value in this video please hit the like button and i'll see you in the next one